All right, well, Dan, I know it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a while since we saw you fight. It's been seven months, but, but give us an idea, I mean, physically, mentally, what you had to go through after that to, to get back and, and ready to do this again. Yeah, oh, it's kind of, well, that's the longest layoff I've ever had in my entire life. So even when I started training, you know, I made my professional debut only six months after starting training. So this is the, and then I've just been fighting back to back, uh, MMA, kickboxing, anything, anything. Um, so that's the longest layoff I've ever had in my life. And it's just brought back, you know, put a time to reflection on how far I've come and, and what I have left. And uh, I'm just more motivated than I've ever been in my career. You got a lot of credit in defeat last time out. A lot of people saying, you know, hey man, just tough as nails, all the respect in the world. I mean, did you take that? Did you, were you able to walk away from that and go, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that? Nah, that's something that I've, I've, I've always known. Like that's something that's come up a few times in my career. And, and I, I definitely know that I had an enemy and I, I knew um, pretty early on in the fight, like where that was going, and it was kind of past the point in their return, but it's kind of a pact that I made with myself a long time ago that um, I can get knocked out, I can get submitted, I can get finished, I don't care about, I can lose, um, I can live with that. Obviously, it's still, it's still painful, but I can live with that. But quitting on myself is something that, that I just can't live with, so that's why I had to keep going, man. Were there moments in there that you thought like, Dude, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I mean, were there like ch moments where you had to check yourself a little bit? No, nah, that's uh, that's the funny thing about it. It wasn't like a difficult decision for me. It was, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, I knew that that's where it was going. It wasn't at any stage that I second guess it or, or look for a way out. Look, very easily I could have um, ended that fight, you know? Uh, as like a veteran, you've been put in those positions, you know the things. When the doctor uh, waves the stick in front of you, all you have to do is not look at the stick. It's as simple as this. It's as simple as looking straight ahead when the doctor goes like this yep. and, and the fight is over. You know, so I'm a veteran. I'm very experienced. I, I knew I could have stopped that fight very easily. But, and, and no one would have said anything. No one would have, no one would have known any different, but I would have known. And that's the main thing. Nice. Well, now you're back. Uh, I know you're a student of the game, so I mean, when you get matched up with people, I know it's not, you, you know who you're facing, you know what they bring to the table. So when you, when you got this name, wh what did you think? Yeah, well, just, you know, learning from my, learning from my experiences is, you know, I've taken more of a step back in this fight and, and you know, had my coaches there and really just trusted in the work that they do. And so, I, yeah. Overanalyzing is something that I haven't done. You know, I've just been working on myself, focusing on myself, and um, letting my coaches do all the all the hard work and breaking them down. I'm just going to go out there, enjoy myself, and fight. Do you think that, were you guilty of that in the past? You think of overanalyzing things and, and breaking? I thought that was one of your strengths is the fact that you could break down fights so well. <laughs> it's good when it comes down to to uh, coaching. Like I've got my my own fighters, my own gym, and and it's very good when it comes to coaching. But there are times when you need to take your coach's hat off and just, just have your fighter's hat on and go out there and fight and enjoy yourself. So fighters fight, man, and, and it's, it's a coach's job to do all the hard work and all the analyzing and things like that. So yeah, that, that's just something I picked up from the last fight. Nice, and last thing for me, give me an idea. What's, what are the goals here? I mean, what are you hoping to accomplish? Is it just get back in the win column? Is it to you know, put the last one behind you? Is it something you want to do here? I mean, what is the goal for this fight? Yeah, well, I feel like I won over Vic puts me back where I left off like uh, it's not uh, you know this isn't just a fight to to get me back on the road this this puts me where I left off so in one fight to turn it all around and then look for a higher rank fighter is um yeah it's exciting it's exciting to, to turn it all in one fight now, when you're talking about you know you had to go through like the self-reflection and everything after that loss like was it was it like a, did you go to like a dark place or was it like a, just a thing like you really need to reassess everything and you know, how was working through that, that process? Yeah, oh man, I was, that's a funny thing, like I was back to training pretty soon after that. I was back coaching on my gym a week after. I was back training a, a few weeks after that, just working on technique and my skills. So look, no one's, um, no one's more honest with themselves than me after anything. So, so that's a that's the thing. I didn't take uh, any one lesson from it. It's not like I put it down to one thing. I learned 
10, 15 things, and I, I changed all of them. So it's it's that every time, because the same my first ass whooping ain't going to be my last one. I, I've taken a lot of hard losses in my career. Pretty much if there's a hard way to do it, I'll, I'll find it, and I'll do it a couple of times. So that's not even like lessons that I've... Um, they're not even new lessons. I'm just <laughs> re relearning old lessons, man. But it's 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 all to kind of build me to the fighter that I, I vision in my head and, and where my direction's going. Because you can't, you know, I don't feel like I'm the complete version of myself yet and, and the fighter that I'm developing into. I feel like I'm still um, a way to, to becoming that complete fighter. You talked about having your own gym, coaching fighters. A lot of people say that doing that helps you actually improve your own technique. Do you find that's the case? Yeah, 100%. You know, um, anything I want to work on, I start coaching in my gym. And you just learn, you know, you, you, you're you just running over the fundamentals so many times. Fundamentals, fundamentals. So, you know, you can work on all the... Um, like high level stuff with your coaches and, and it goes like you kind of go down a rabbit hole where you're just going like deeper and deeper and deeper and things get like over you over, over analyze and they get overly technical so then when you come down to coaching and you're just coaching someone from scratch and teaching the basics and the fundamentals you remember how important they are and you're just running them over them every day so you, you're getting a bit of both you're running through all the fundamentals and then um you know adding depth to your game um, with, with your own coaches. Oh, uh, you recently took a page out of Al Iaquinta's book, Getting the Real Estate Qualifications. Uh, you plan on doing that as a side business at all, or? Yeah, oh, well, that takes, a, that takes a, a bit of attention. So that's another thing I took from the last fight was, you know, not, not trying to take on too much and, and do too much outside of the ring. So I, I just knew after that fight I had a bit of time to kill. So that was, um, I just went through all the qualifications and uh, things like that and get qualified. So. Uh, having having a lot of options is never a bad thing. And obviously, Vic is a you know huge opponent. You said that even when you fought you know heavyweights back in your home country, you didn't have anybody that was as tall as he is. Do you see, foresee his size being a problem at all, or do you think you can? Oh, it's a, it's just a new challenge. Like that's just a, I feel like I get to show something new. You know, uh, fighting shorter guys and uh, most of my careers. You know, early on is fighting shorter guys that want to take you down. So now a taller guy that wants to strike, look, it's not, but I have a lot of them in the gym and I have, you know, more than 10 years of experience of, of fighting taller guys in the gym. So it's interesting to get to display something that I haven't been able to display yet in my career. So it's a, I take it as like a, a new challenge, an interesting challenge. Um, yeah, rather is like a obstacle. And you also said uh, that you hadn't even heard of San Antonio when you originally got <laughs> got the fight. Now that you've been here, what do you think of it? Is you know all right? How does it, how does it compare to other places? Yeah, no, I, I like San Antonio. You've been walking around the Alamo, and uh, no, I like it. Um, you know, there's a lot of Mexican culture here, a lot of Spanish architecture. So I feel like it, it's a beautiful place. And how do you, if you could give me a prediction for the fight, how do you see it going? Yeah, I'm not too good at predictions. It never turns out the way I want it to. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I feel I feel good for this fight. I feel like it's going to be a very dangerous fight. Um, both of us can knock people out. Both of us can submit people. You know, I feel like uh, first one to make a mistake. But I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling extremely confident going into this fight. I feel like I'm in a position where where I just can't lose. I just can't lose. Like everything's riding on this fight, and I'm I'm just going to go in with that mentality.